Weary with toil, I haste me to my bed, the dear repose for limbs with travel tired. But then begins a journey in my head to work my mind when body's works expired. For then my thoughts, from far where I abide, intend a zealous pilgrimage to thee, and keep my drooping eyelids open wide, looking on darkness which the blind do see. Save that my soul's imaginary sight presents thy shadow to my sightless view, which, like a jewel hung in a ghastly night, makes black night beauteous, and her old face new. Lo, thus by day my limbs, by night my mind, for thee and for myself no quiet find. Look in thy glass, and tell the face thou viewest, now is the time that face should form another, whose fresh repair, if now thou not renewest, thou dost beguile the world, unbless some mother. For where is she so fair, whose unaired womb disdains the tillage of thy husbandry? Or who is he so fond, will be the tomb of his self-love to stop posterity? Thou art thy mother's glass, and she in thee calls back the lovely April of her prime. So thou, through windows of thine age, shall see, despite of wrinkles, this thy golden time. But if thou live remembered not to be, die single, and thy image dies with thee. hand defaced, the rich proud cost of outworn buried age. When sometime lofty towers I see, down raised, and brass eternal slave to mortal rage. When I have seen the hungry ocean gain advantage on the kingdom of the shore, and the firm soil win of the watery main, increasing store with loss, and loss with store. When I have seen such interchange of state, or state itself confounded to decay, ruin hath taught me thus to ruminate, that time will come and take my love away. This thought is as a death, which cannot choose, but weep to have that which it fears to lose. When, in disgrace with fortune and men's eyes, I all alone beweep my outcast state and trouble deaf heaven with my bootless cries and look upon myself and curse my fate, wishing me like to one more rich in hope, featured like him, like him with friends possessed, 
desiring this man's art and that man's scope with what I most enjoy, contented least, yet in these thoughts myself almost despising, haply, I think of thee, and then my state, like to the lark at break of day arising from sullen earth, sings hymns at heaven's gate, for thy sweet love remembered such wealth brings, that then I scorn to change my state with kings. When in the Chronicle of Wasted Time, I see descriptions of the fairest whites and beauty making beautiful old rhyme in praise of ladies dead and lovely knights, then in the blazon of sweet beauty's best of hand, of foot, of lip, of eye, of brow, I see their antique pen would have expressed even such a beauty as you master now. So all their praises are but prophecies of this our time, all you prefiguring. And for they looked but with divining eyes, they had not skill enough your worth to sing. For we, which now behold these present days, have eyes to wonder, but lack tongues to praise. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Thou art more lovely and more temperate. Rough winds do shake the darling buds of May, And summer's lease hath all too short a date. Sometime too hot the eye of heaven shines, And often is his gold complexion dimmed, And every fair from fair sometime declines, By chance or nature's changing course untrimmed. But thy eternal summer shall not fade, nor lose possession of that fair thou owest, nor shall death brag thou wanderest in his shade, when in eternal lines to time thou growest. So long as men can breathe, or eyes can see, so long lives this, and this gives life to thee. Not marble, nor the gilded monuments of princes shall outlive this powerful rhyme, but you shall shine more bright in these contents than unswept stone besmeared with sluttish time, when wasteful war shall statues overturn, and broils root out the work of masonry, nor Mars his sword nor war's quick fire shall burn the living record of your memory. Against death and all oblivious enmity shall you pace forth, 
your praise shall still find room, even in the eyes of all posterity that wear this world out to the ending doom. So, till the judgment that yourself arise, you live in this and dwell in lovers' eyes. No longer mourn for me when I am dead, and you shall hear the surly, sullen bell give warning to the world that I am fled from this vile world with vilest worms to dwell. Nay, if you read this line, remember not the hand that writ it, for I love you so that I in your sweet thoughts would be forgot, if thinking on me then should make you woe. Oh, if I say you look upon this verse, when I, perhaps compounded am with clay, do not so much as my poor name rehearse, but let your love even with my life decay, lest the wise world should look into your moan and mock you with me after I am gone. When I do count the clock that tells the time And see brave day sunk in hideous night When I behold the violet past prime And sable curls all silvered o'er with light When lofty trees I see barren of leaves Which erst from heat did canopy the herd And summer's green all girded up in sheaves Born on the beer with white and bristly beard Then of thy beauty do I question me Thou among the wastes of time must go, since sweets and beauties do themselves forsake and die as fast as they see others grow. And nothing gainst time's scythe can make defence, save breed, to brave him when he takes thee hence.
That time of year thou mayst in me behold, When yellow leaves, or none, or few, Do hang upon those boughs which shake against the cold, Bare ruined choirs, where late the sweet birds sang. In me thou seest the twilight of such day As after sunset fadeth in the west, Which by and by black nights doth take away, Death's second self that seals up all in rest. In me thou seest the glowing of such fire That on the ashes of his youth doth lie, As the deathbed whereon it must expire, Consumed with that which it was nourished by. This thou perceivest, which makes thy love more strong, To love that well which thou must leave ere long. <coughs> that you were once unkind befriends me now, and for that sorrow which I then did feel, needs must I under my transgression bow, unless my nerves were brass or hammered steel. For if you were by my unkindness shaken as I by yours, you have passed a hell of time, and I a tyrant, have no leisure taken to weigh how I once suffered in your crime. <coughs> oh, th that our night of woe might have remembered my deepest sense, how hard true sorrow hits, and soon to you as you to me, then tendered the humble salve which wounded bosoms fits. But that your trespass now becomes a fee. Mine ransoms yours, and yours must ransom me. The expense of spirit in a waste of shame is lust in action. Until action, lust is perjured, murderous, bloody, full of blame, savage, extreme, rude, cruel, not to trust, enjoyed no sooner but despised, straight, past reason hunted and no sooner had past reason hated as a swallowed bait, on purpose laid to make the taker mad, mad in pursuit and in possession, so had, having, and in quest to have extreme, a bliss in proof and proved very well, before a joy proposed behind, a dream. All this the world well knows, yet none knows well to shun the heaven that leads men to this hell. Thank you. 
My mistress's eyes are nothing like the sun. Coral is far more red than her lips red. If snow be white, why then her breasts are done? If hairs be wires, black wires grow on her head. I've seen roses damasked red and white, but no such roses see I in her cheeks. And in some perfumes there is more delight than in the breath that from my mistress reeks. I love to hear her speak, yet well I know that music hath a far more pleasing sound. I grant, I never saw a goddess go. My mistress, when she walks, treads on the ground. And yet, by heaven, I think my love as rare as any she belied with false compare. Those lines that I before have writ do lie, even those that said I could not love you dearer. Yet then my judgment knew no reason why my most full flame should afterwards burn clearer. But reckoning time, whose millioned accidents creep in twixt vows and change decrees of kings, tan sacred beauty, blunt the sharpest intents, divert strong minds to the course of altering things. Alas, why, fearing of time's tyranny, might I not then say, Now I love you best, when I was certain or uncertainty, crowning the present, doubting of the rest? Love is a babe, then might I not say so, to give full growth to that which still doth grow?